Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video and I am finally home from my vacation so I'm gonna be making the normal, the usual videos again. Unfortunately my green screen literally fell off the wall. As you can see, the green screen literally fell off. I have no idea how. I'm gonna hang it back on, don't worry. Today's video, we will be watching Yasuo in the mid lane guys and let me tell you right now, Yasuo is one of those champions that only the top 5% of the Yasuo players are actually really good at. This is the type of champion that takes insane practice to get good at. You know, you have champions like Fiora, Yasuo, uh, Vayne, uh, 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 like very mechanically hard champions, you know, and Yasuo is one of those. So this is going to be a very important guide for some of you guys out there that want to get good at Yasuo, but are not quite there yet. So... <clears throat> This video is played by Ryu. Yet again, you know, he's going to provide some co uh, content for the channel as well. He's a challenger player. He currently has, I believe, like 1200 LP. So, you know, it's some, it's good gameplay. Um, um, his socials are in the description. I'm going to explain the build part in the video right now. You can find timestamps in the description to skip to the gameplay immediately. So there's different ways that you can build Yasuo. But there is what there, sorry. Yeah, there's two items that you always go for, which is the Solar Charge Blade and the Infinity Edge. 99% of the games, Solari, Charge Blade, and the Infinity Edge are going to be part of your build. But in what order do you build them? What are some other situational items? Let me explain it to you exactly. I personally, this is a per this is personally, I personally almost always start off with the Solari Charge Blade because it gives you a lot of damage. Like damage wise, this one is going to be the best against squishies, especially. However, there's two different, uh, sorry, there's three different items that you can start off with. Yeah, so first one is Solari Charge Blade. Second one is the Blade of the Rune King. And then third one is the Wits End. Start the Blade of the Rune King if you're against a tanky matchup. You know, if you're playing against a Galio and the enemy has a tanky jungler as well and stuff like that, you're actually generally much better off going for a Blade of the Rune King than starting off with the Solar Charge Bit. I mean, of course, you're still gonna build the Solar Charge Bit because it's literally the perfect item for Yasuo. But against a tanky matchup, start with the Blade of the Rune King. It's gonna be much better. If you are against a heavy AP matchup, you know, if you're laning against an AP matchup and the enemy also has an Evelyn jungle, then it's a no-brainer to start with a Wits End, guys. Wits End is already an amazing item on Yasuo because it applies on hits of um like it has an on-hit effect, and Yasuo can apply on-hit effect super easily. Every basic attack, every first ability, every tornado applies on-hit effect. So items that have have on hit effects are really good on Yasuo, you know, like Blade of the Noon King, with Ant, and the Solari Charge Blade, guys. So, with Ant, you know, you have to decide yourself do I want this item? Do I want the magic resist? If you want the magic resist, just build the item. Like, it's totally worth to build if you need magic resist. Like, this is the only magic resist item that you should ever build on Yasuo. You can build it first item, you can build it second item, you can build it last item. But as I said, if the enemy has a lot of AP, you build it either as your first item. If you want to be tankier or you build it as your second item right after the Solaris charge blade however keep in mind let me show you if you build it like this with and solari charge blade you might like you're very likely going to be skipping the blade of the rune king the reason is because you need the infinity edge as your third item right like infinity edge is going to give you that 100 percent crit chance uh with the solari charge blade so you know you 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 just you just have to you have to like you have to uh, uh skip the blade of the king go for infinity edge because fourth item you need a mortal reminder and then garden angel is much better in the late game than blade of the king because you already have enough damage so basically it's either with end or a blade of the Rune king incorporated in your build you have to decide yourself you know either with end or blade of the Rune king and then do you want to start with the with end or the blade of the Rune king or do you want to start with the solari charge blade Afterwards, it's easy. You go for the Infinity Edge. I mean, it's situational, but generally you go for the Mortal Reminder then. Don't go for uh, Cyrilla's Grudge. Mortal Reminder is just much better because when you... Um, <clears throat> When you spin around with your first ability, you know, when you engage with your third ability and spin, do the spin attack with your first ability, you're going to be applying Grievous Wounds to all of the enemies. This is generally going to be worth more than the slow that Cyrilla's Grudge gives you. I mean, Cyrilla's Grudge is okay, I guess, but it's just not, it doesn't really fit Yasuo too well. Last item, Guardian Angel, right? Like, this is the perfect late game item that you need. I mean, you can go for uh, Death Stance. It's like an alternative to Guardian Angel. If the enemy doesn't have 
any anti-healing whatsoever, I guess you can get away with a death stance. Then it's actually much better. But of course, that's not going to happen. I mean, unless you're in very low elo, and if you can pay attention to that, if you can spot that the enemy doesn't have any healing, boom, death stance instead of the guardian angel, and you're literally going to become unkillable. Like, enemies can never kill you. But in higher elo, you know, from emerald and above, enemies are going to get anti-healing, right? Like, they're not that stupid. Um, for the boots that you want to get, there's multiple boots that you can go for. Glutinous Griefs are amazing, especially if you do not start with the Blade of the King, because Yasuo deals a lot of damage, and Glutinous Griefs is going to allow you to heal up during the fight, right? Mercury Threats, I don't really recommend, and the, the, like, the reason that I don't really recommend them is, while, while um, and Tenacity is good, Yasuo already has a second ability, which is the Wind Wall to block certain abilities, right? Like, you can use the second ability to block CC, you know, like Lux first ability, Morgana first ability thrash hook blah 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 you can block so much stuff that mercury stress just kind of loses its value on yasuo plated steel cups of course if the enemy is full attack damage and as i said otherwise you just go for the gluten griefs for your enchantment there's multiple ones that you can go for stasis is really good if you need a stasis right like if you need that stasis enchant against a fizz or something it's good protobelt is great if you want to be super aggressive quicksilver is really underrated but amazing on yasuo because yasuo wants to continuously fight it as i said um, you don't generally build tenacity on Yasuo, so if the enemy catches you, you're pretty screwed. What is the Quicksilver enchant for gonna do for you? It's gonna allow you to escape, even if you get catch, if you know, even if you get caught out. Besides that, there is real, really no other enchantment that you go for. Um, let me see. So for the runes, always conquer. It's insanely easy to stack it up, so always go for conquer. Second rune, you go for brutal currently. The current patch it's just it's worth more than the other ones it gives you insane early game damage like again champion would make a little bit sense because yasuo is already unbeatable in the late game you only kind of want to have you you only kind of have to get through the early game but brutal is already going to do that for you right like the seven attack damage and the two percent armor penetration is already going to do that for you if you really want to focus on the late game you can go for a hunter vampirism but like I, I just don't like it brutal is just generally better on yasuo third rune adaptive carapace or the bone plating again you know you can go for hunter titan if you really need it if you really need the tenacity but adaptive carapace is going to be is generally going to be much better because it's going to allow you to do really well early game in your lane and same for bone plating you know bone plating is great against champions like zed against champions like oriana you know champions that, that will hit multiple abilities and attacks on you at the same time fourth rune um sweet tooth i mean yeah sweet tooth like honestly mostly for the gold because yasuo doesn't have any mana so a hunter genius is not worth it on him because he doesn't really have many cooldowns and Ability haste doesn't even affect his third ability, by the way, only attack speed does. Pack Hunter is meh, mana flow bent, again, you don't need it. That's like the whole reason why you go for Sweet Tooth. Not because Sweet Tooth is broken, but it's really the only rune that does anything for Yasuo, so that's why you go for it. For your spells, you go for Flash and Ignite, or if you really want to play it passively early game, Flash and Barrier. So enough about the build, let's now get into the gameplay. Oh wait, I can I get into the gameplay like this. Boom! all right on to the gameplay so as i said you know ryu is playing let me just put my phone away for a second guys uh one second uh apologies guys let me just put my phone away all right um what was i talking about yes yes yeah, so well, guys this is this is like perhaps one of the most interesting champions in the game like, everyone loves Yasuo, what did I just do? Everyone loves Yasuo, guys. But no one knows how to play Yasuo. And Ryu actually picked the absolute perfect game for you guys, he told me, for the YouTube channel, right? Like, I haven't watched this video yet, I'm reacting to it first time, and I'm gonna be giving my insights on it, and my anal analysis, because you guys also said you enjoyed these types of videos, and see what he does and analyze it, right? Because he told me he purposely picked this video because he made some, like, he made some relatable mistakes of Yasuo players, right? Like, uh, so yeah, I'm expecting this video to be really good. So, let's take a look at how he's doing the early matchup. He's against an Ari, and Ari actually, like, Ari can destroy Yasuo in the early game. Like, Ari, you know, with that third ability. Like, first of all, a weakness of Yasuo would be his passive right we all know Yasuo's passive can be really strong the barrier when you move around you charge up the barrier and as you can see whenever you get attacked you get a quick barrier as you can see while he's moving around he's getting the barrier 
By the way, just FYI guys, this might be something that you didn't know about Yasuo's passive. Yasuo's passive does not charge up based on how much you walk. It doesn't even charge up based on how far, like how much you dash. It literally charges up based on how much distance you cover. Sounds weird, right? Like, for example, when a Thresh throws a lantern to you and you dash to the Thresh, you are going to be charging up your passive super fast. Another example, when you use teleport boots, oh, when you use teleport boots to a certain spot, you're going to charge up your passive. So you can see he's actually doing really well against the Aru, considering that it's quite an annoying matchup in the early game. Like, the thing about Ari is, Ari can just use her basic attack or her second ability, and her second ability gives her movement speed, to quickly get close to you and just throw away your passive, right? That is a weakness of Yasuo that I was going to talk about, which is if an enemy can very easily proc your passive, it sucks for Yasuo. Oh, no, he didn't go for it. Of course, he would die. For example, if you're against a... If you're against an Orianna, Orianna can just quickly throw her ball at you, use her second ability from a really long distance, and boom, she procs your passive, right? Um, are you against a Soraka? Boom, she throws any ability on you, and she procs your passive. Enemies that have long range and just have quick poking for a from a long range can very easily proc your passive, and that's a thing that you want to be avoiding as a Yasuo, right? Like, as a Yasuo, you really want to be utilizing that passive, the shield, to be to do some short trades. That's like the whole way that you can either win the early game, or trade even in the early game with Yasuo. Um, oh, that was a nice try, like, that's, that's a way to play him aggressively. So basically, you get your tornado, and then you use your third ability to dash through minions, and get close to the enemy, and boom, tornado the enemy. By the way, there is some sick flash combos that Yasuo can do. It's like, I'm not gonna tell you everything in this video. Or not. That that's pretty unfortunate timing as you can see. Oh he got ganked by the Renekton. Oh, he got the kill though. He got ganked by the Renekton. And honestly, you can't really blame him because the it's oh it's the Renekton jungle? Wait a minute. Enemies have a Renekton jungle. Okay, yeah, they have a Renekton jungle. All right, well, okay, my bad, I guess. Yeah, okay, I guess so. Um, it was actually good. He would have killed Ari, but unfortunately, Renekton was ganking right at that moment. Like, what can you do? Right, it, it just happens. Um, but what was I talking about? Yeah, so you can this exactly this. See that you can dash through minions and boom, throw your tornado to the enemy. Wow, they're being very aggressive to him right here. Yeah. So. Uh, your weakness as a Yasuo as well are champions that don't care about your barrier. Renekton, Riven, or sorry, 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 sorry. Champions that don't care about your wind wall, apologies. Champions that do not care about your wind wall are melee champions often, you know, like Riven, like Renekton, like Fiora, like, uh, 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 you know, these types of champions that don't have anything to throw at you, they just attack you. Those are weaknesses of Yasuo, like as you can see, even if you throw your wind wall on a Renekton, he's still just gonna dash on you and destroy you. Champions like Senna, champions like Lucian, champions like Lux. Why are these champions good against Yasuo? There is this thing called lasers. There is champions that have abilities and basic attacks that are lasers. So Yasuo's second ability blocks projectiles. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, so it blocks projectiles, but lasers go right through it. Lux's ultimate goes through it. Senna's basic attacks. Senna's first ability. Lucian's first ability. These are all things that go right through the wind wall of Yasuo. By the way, what I'm giving you guys right here is drafting tips, by the way. You know, you should listen carefully, drafting tips. But a champion like Caitlyn, Yasuo is insanely good against, because... Yasuo can of course block her long range attacks, Yasuo can block that ultimate, Yasuo can block all of that, same against the Jinx, you know, you can block all that stuff, same against the Jin. these are the types of champions that you want to be picking Yasuo against, so let's take a look at what's happening here, so Ryu actually is actually deciding to stay in the mid lane, and he's playing solo queue by the way, so there is a risk with staying in the mid lane as a mid lane, right? Your side lane might get destroyed, your jungle might get destroyed, and that's exactly what's happening in the game right now. And there it is, another nice little engage. Boom, boom. He's saving his third ability. So he saved his third ability there. 
and used it when the Ari was trying to run away. He didn't instantly use it, because the reason that you don't instantly use it is because then, you know, you've already used it up and you don't have another dash anymore. If you don't have to use it, why would you, right? Like, why the hell would you use it if you don't have to? Here he was baiting him to the Wukong. Nice! Oh, damn. Wow. That was insanely close. So what he did here is, he, you know, he baited the Renekton. Vukong was right there. That was a really smart move, right? So normally you would run away. But he was baiting uh, uh, the Renekton to go too far. And then he and the Vukong killed him. Even if he died for it, it was still worth it. Because the Renekton had a pretty big shutdown. By the way, guys, I'm still doing this skin giveaway. It's gonna be a little annoying now because you have to wait two weeks to claim your skin. But I'm still giving away 15 skins this month. All you have to do is put down a comment under this video and under some other videos. Now we can finally see him actually rotate, which is the right thing to do. He immediately ignites, which I really like, by the way. Okay, so the reason that I really like that he immediately ignites is, and this is a common misconception that, that especially low elo players have with ignite. A common misconception is that Ignite is supposed to be like a finishing room, right? Like Ignite, or sorry, finishing uh, summoner spell. Use Ignite when the enemy is at like 30% HP and finish them off. Or use Ignite when an enemy is at like 5% HP, Ignite is gonna finish them off. While it is true that Ignite is good at the situations, it is true. Ah, yeah, yeah, that sucks. Let me tell you, actually, should I ask you to test your knowledge? Nah, this one is a bit too easy, I'll just tell you. The reason that you use your Ignite in a situation like that instantly, even though the Renekton is full HP, is because you're gonna all in him, your Ignite is gonna reduce his healing, and a champion like Renekton has healing, his first ability. It has a lot of healing, by the way, so you're already gonna be cutting a percentage of that healing, which is really good. But let's ignore that. Ooh, he was barely too far away with that ultimate. He would have hit his ultimate on two enemies right there uh, with the Nami ultimate. So that's a thing with Yasuo. That you constantly have to be aware of, right? It's a nice kill. He cannot do anything against Riven. So he just has to run. He has to try to kill the Ari right here. Because that's really the only thing he can do. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you're dead in this situation anyway. So you have to go for the desperate move. Which is going for the Ari. That's like the only thing that you can do in a situation like this. What was I saying? Um, yeah. With Yasuo, of course, he becomes infinitely better when you pick him with knockup champions, right? Like Wukong, Nami, uh, Malphite, Alistar. You want to pick him with these types of champions. Because, of course, when a Malphite gets like a four-man ultimate... Damn! That's the support that you want to have in your team, baby! Hell yeah! You just stole it! Just like, like, just stole it! Like, it's nothing! What a, what a god, man. <laughs> okay, what was I talking about? You want to pick Yasuo with champions that have knockouts, like Malphite and stuff. I mean, that's obvious, right? Like, everyone knows that already. Vukong goes in. He's ready with his ultimate. You have, to you have to constantly be ready with that ultimate, by the way. Whenever your team gets an insane knockout, boom, you use your ultimate. You're going to knock up the enemy and you're going to do a lot of damage. So, early game, ganking with... Hmm. Uh, it ended up being good. Yeah, okay. So, the, like, okay, so it ended up being good, but I want to talk about the way that Ryu is doing it, which I don't like. The way that he's doing it, he's like tr kind of trusting his Wukong to do a good ultimate. If you guys paid close attention, the way that he's using his ultimate is um, he's just spamming it. Now, the problem with this is. Sure, if the Vulcan gets a good ultimate, it's gonna be good. But there, there's two problems with this. The first problem is, what if the Vulcan gets a bad ult? If you spam your ultimate, you cannot actually see who you're gonna hit. Oh, this is good though. Nice. Look at how strong that Solari is. But if you spam your ultimate, first of all, you, you cannot really rely your team on your teammates always. But let me tell you the second reason, which is a more important and perhaps subtle reason. So, Yasuo's ultimate has like a duration of, how much is it, like 1.3 seconds, you know? It extends the knockup duration. It extends an existing knockup by a certain amount. I believe 1.3, 1.4 seconds. But the way that it works is, for example, if a Malphite knocks up an enemy and the knockup lasts two seconds, but if you, if you as a Yasuo, 
instantly use your knockup right after the Malphite knockup, you're not actually gonna make it any longer. You're only gonna be adding 1.4 seconds to the current duration. But if you wait 1.9 out of those 2 seconds throughout the knockup, you know, like let's say Malphite knocks up an enemy. Instead of using it here, you wait, you wait, you wait, right before they hit the ground, you wait right before the enemy hits the ground, and boom, you're gonna knock them up again. This is gonna give you maximum knockup duration. And this is why I don't like the way of instantly ulting. So let's take a look. See what I mean? See what I mean? Like, I hope you guys see what I mean here. It's good. Like, sure, this was good. But it can be better. Oh, he has to go here. Go. Nice. There we go, baby. Yes, but... I, I really want you guys to take a lesson from this, right? While he's playing Yasuo very clean, like this is this is this is pretty good Yasuo gameplay right here. That ultimate, that it's a thing, guys. Because the, the thing you have to understand about knockups is the duration cannot be reduced by tenacity or anything. The duration is always going to be the same. So when your Wukong hits three enemies at the same time, for example, never use it instantly. I mean, unless it's like a certain situation where you kind of here yet again he does it like that. So here it's actually fine because he had to quickly go on the Riven, but when you do it in a team fight, it's much better to wait. It's much much better because you're gonna be ha you're literally gonna have a longer knock up, which is gonna buy your team more time to do more damage to the enemy, right? Like of course that's good. Yeah, he has to run here. Yeah, unfortunately he got smited. He cannot run away. Yeah. And throughout this entire game, actually. Um, um, Yasuo hasn't ganked. He hasn't really ganked any lane. Well, he tried. No, 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 he did. He ganked bot lane and he got a kill. But he hasn't really ganked too much. He hasn't ganked top lane a sing single time. He just hasn't ganked too much. And the thing that happened in this game right now is although he's pretty ahead, his team is losing because his teammates are losing their lanes. And, you know, he should have actually kind of sacrificed his lane a bit and ganked the other lanes because he also told me like this is literally what he told me is in this game You can clearly see that as a mid laner you cannot be a selfish player Sure Yasuo is a strong champion, but no champion can 1 versus 9. These are literal literal quoted words from Ryu, which I agree on and even if your teammates are not good, you should still gank. You should still gank them. Try to find those ganking opportunities because he was not really looking for too many opportunities. He was mostly farming in his lane and he should have actually looked for a bit more opportunities and gotten his team more ahead. It's fine though. Like, look at him. He's level 14. Vayne is level 11, however. So he literally sacrificed his team for himself. Which is, you know, it's, it's, it's good, of course, but you don't want to sacrifice them 100%. But let's take a look at this. He wants to go, he wants to get his death, death stance, his last item. He's very close to it actually. He nearly has it. So let's take a look at how he approaches it. Nah, that's not a good start to the fight. Oh, that is such a horrible start. Vayne ultimate, Nami ultimate, everything wasted. The only way they can win is a good Wukong ult, but he's not there. Oh no! He was not there. He was he was too far away. Wukong all the three enemies, but he was not there. But even if he hit them, I don't think he would have been able to do anything really. Wow. Damn. As you can see, this is the problem. Like, if you don't help your team, they're all gonna be so weak. Like, you pretty much have to play the fight perfectly to win. Which is, you know, like have an insane Wukong ultimate and follow it up with the Yasuo ult. Sure, they'll win a fight like that, but if it doesn't happen, they just lose the fight. Enemies shouldn't be able to kill him here. He's a bit too strong. Yep, there it is. There it is, exactly. Like, he's super fat, this is what you can do. He shouldn't even die- oh, never mind, there is a Riven. Oh, he nearly survived actually, wow. But yeah, you can clearly see, you know, champ, it's like Riven is gonna be a huge problem for you as a Yasuo. This is why you can't just 1 versus 9 on a Yasuo. Because sure, I guess a champion like Caitlyn, sure, I guess a champion like Lulu, you're not gonna have any problems. He sells his Guardian Angel, goes for Styrox Cage. Let's think about that actually. He sells his guardian angel and goes for the stack cage. Do you guys know what the reason is? Let me tell you, like I can already tell the exact reason why he sold his guardian angel and bought a stack cage. I'm 99% sure of this, but if, if it's wrong, then you know I'll ask him and he'll tell me. But but 
I'm gonna ask you guys to test your knowledge. This is gonna be an insanely hard one. Test your knowledge. Why on earth would you possibly sell your guardian angel for a Sterex gauge in a situation like this with a full build? Why the hell would you do that? Pause the video right now. Put it in the comments. This is this is a hard one. Okay, this is like one of the hardest ones that I've done before. If you're lower elo, if you're high elo, you might get it. They stole it. It's okay though. It's fine. But let me tell you now exactly why he did it. He's full build already, and he had five items. Let me let me show you why he did it. Uh, if I point towards it, you'll see. You see that? You see that? He is full built. He has five items. And uh, he has five items and he has a lot of gold. Like he literally has enough gold to sell an item and buy another item. Um, he, his guardian angel was used up during a fight. He had enough gold to sell an item and buy another item. What he did is he sold his guardian angel and bought a Sterex gauge. Sterex gauge has a different passive from the guardian angel. So... And the passive man, hey, again, he does it again, it's just, I, I just don't like the way that he's using his ultimate, he's a good Yasuo player, but he's just, I, I really don't like this, this instant ultimate cast, like, I'm gonna ask him why he does this, because I feel like there must be something behind it, but I, I don't think that's the way to go on Yasuo, to be honest, you want to be extending your knockup duration as long as possible, let's take a look at this, he has his ultimate again, by the way, Oh, nice. Oh, look at that damage. Ooh, there we go. Now he gets the Sterex Gage. You see what I mean? If he didn't sell his Guardian Angel, he wouldn't get that Sterex Gage proc, which is literally making him tankier right now. I'm sure that right now he's going to sell his Sterex Gage and buy, a even, buy another item. There we go. He sells his Sterex Gage and he rebuys the Guardian Angel. So I was actually 100% right about that passive. Yeah, I was 100% right about it. He's gonna have the Guardian Angel passive up very soon. And as you can see... Wait... See, this is the Sterex Gage passive. This is the Guardian Angel passive. If he, Yeah, this is the Guardian Angel. Guardian Angel's almost back up. And when he uses it again, he's gonna sell it and buy a Sterex Gage. So, he, literally, like, he basically has two different uh, uh, passives of an item. These are insane, like these are some pretty smart plays and when you're super ahead in a game, you know, when, you, when you're full build, these are the types of things that you can do and it can win you games, trust me, like these are the things that can win you games. Same with his enchantment boots, by the way. He's selling his protobelt, buying teleport, now he doesn't have teleport, he sold it and he bought protobelt back again, right? Oh, imagine if, the, imagine if Nami stole it again, wow. Yeah, now he has his guardian angel, see that? He has it again. Oh, that should be a kill. Nah, he cannot. Unfortunately, he cannot because the enemy is just way too strong. With that Elder Dragon, he cannot do anything anymore. Yeah, he cannot do anything. So, the reason that he mainly lost this game, first of all, he had a horrible team. Secondly, he was not really a team player. And, I mean, of course, those the, the way that he used his ultimate, it, like, it might have been game losing in few fights because he could have actually waited for a bit better ultimates at some times so using a right ultimate with Yasuo is insanely important like it's, it's it's his whole kit initially like you can completely destroy the enemy with that ultimate better than 100% Yasuo of the same tier regardless though let's take a look at how much damage he did 47,000 damage damn so that was it about the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.